we're back on the roof. So we got no heat call. Uh, we're receiving a call for heat. Inducer comes on. Uh, but I got two flashes. One, two. So that's a high limit trip, I believe. Uh, yeah, limit switch. And our axial fan's not coming on. So this is one of those newer ones, so we gotta see what's up with that. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get this fan to come on. So he's right, so jumping R to G. It's nothing's happening. So, oh. Okay, well that's a call from the thermostat. But yeah, basically the fan's not coming on. So we gotta see what's up with that, but that's what's causing our high limit. So we need to see, um, we need to check a few things is, this is basically an ECM motor. Uh, so we're gonna be receiving high voltage all the time and then low voltage for controls. So first things first, we wanna make sure we're receiving the high voltage to it. So I'm gonna disconnect the W, that way it doesn't keep calling for, uh, for the heat. Uh, so we're gonna make sure we have high voltage first and then we're gonna go ahead and look at our schematic and figure out which one's the control voltage uh, and see which ones, if we're actually receiving control voltage. Because uh, if we are, then that means it's the motor. If we're not, well then we could have an issue with the board or or something else in there. So here we go. Alrighty, so this black and yellow, that's gonna be our high voltage. These three wires here, the white, orange, and gray, that's our control voltage. Uh, so we're gonna make sure we're getting voltage. We should be getting voltage whether we're receiving a call or not. Um, so basically this will send the information to the motor module, which will which it'll figure out what to turn on. And so 24 volt or, or 204, 240 volts is gonna be supplied all the time. So let's see, so that's gonna be these two pins right up here. That will be our high voltage. So we're gonna make sure we're getting high voltage because um, it could just be the motor. Um, it seems to be spinning okay. I don't feel any resistance. It is pretty hot. It is like totally red hot. Yeah, this is plastic and I can feel how hot it is. So um, yeah, and I'm thinking this is the limit that's tripped because yeah, this whole, this whole housing is pretty hot. Of course the heat exchanger sits below it. So uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and test this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and check for voltage. Uh, just like that, we're gonna try not to short anything. So we do have our high voltage, 212. So this is 208 single phase, or it might be three phase. No, it's single phase, so this is a single phase unit. Uh, is it? No, no, it's a three phase unit, but the blower is single phase uh, in this case. So we are receiving high voltage. So it's looking like this motor might be dead. So we're gonna check a few more things. Well, it looks like it fixed itself. So I'm thinking that maybe it went off on thermal overload or something. Uh, but basically I was looking at the schematic. So uh, white is gonna be our common. Uh, if we look here, you can see uh, our C is common and that is gonna be white. Gray is going to be our communication, so that's that's actually the data. So that's it's telling it how fast to go. That's going to be between two and ten volts DC, and then uh, what do you call it? Our orange to white. That's going to be uh, ten volts supplied. So that's going to power the the uh, you know the, the the logic module. So that should be consistent ten volts DC, and then the other one white to uh, I forgot the colors already. Oops. So let's see, white to gray. Yeah, so, yeah, so gray, gray to white, that's gonna be um, the communication line, okay? So again, gray to white is communication, and orange to white is 10 volts. And uh, the communication is gonna be between two and 10 volts. So let's see what it's doing. All right, so we're checking between orange and white. You can see we're receiving 10 volts DC, okay? So now we wanna check our communication. Uh, which is going to be uh, gray to white. So we're getting 9.2 volts DC. So it is calling and it seems like it's almost full blast. So, and it's going to be between 2 and 10 volts. And then, uh, yeah, that's gray to white. And then orange to white is a steady 10 volts DC. So I suspect that this thing overheated for some reason. So we got to check that out. I think it went into thermal overload. Uh, so we may have an issue with the motor still. So we want to get our amp draw since it's on full blast right now. We'll go ahead and do that. 
and we're going to do that on our high voltage lines right here. It's going to be this black or yellow wire. Okay, so we're getting about 6.48 indoor, 7.1, so it's below that, and I have the door off. All right, so she's been running now for about 20 minutes without any further issues. I think that motor overheated for some reason. Uh, amp draws seem to be fine. It's pulling uh, 6.48, 6.52 max. So it's not doing anything weird, and I have the, the G wire taken off of it. So I'm going to go ahead and close her off and call it a day for today. Uh, I'm going to suggest we replace that motor. Maybe it's overheating for some reason. Uh, filters are clean. Uh, coil is not blocked. So uh, there's no restrictions in the ducting. So um, maybe there's something up with that motor, but it seems to be fine right now. Uh, I reset something and it started working. So we got our new motor. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace the motor. Um, and it actually failed again. Um, so anyway, we gotta get this all taken apart. So let's go ahead and do it. So here we go. All right, so in order to, in order to take these off, we gotta take these bolts out. I think they're 5 16 You can see there's quite a few of them. And then this whole thing will lift up, but we got to get the shroud off first. So that just has clips on it here. So we just pop the clips and it should just pop right out. I believe so. So let's do that. All right, so we got the shroud off. So it's pretty easy. You just pop these four clips and it pops right out. Um, yeah, I know it's snowing. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and remove the 516 screws. All righty, so I got, there's actually six screw, uh, 516 screws in there, so... Just making sure I got them all. Looks like I did. Okay, so this whole thing should just pop right out. Just like that. So I'm gonna have to do this two-handed so it comes off straight, but yeah. Okay, so it looks like we gotta take this whole thing off uh, and then remove the motor, which is this guy from this thing. So let's do that. All right, so we just removed the two uh, 516 screws and then in the back you can see there it's got a little clip so we just pull this towards us and it's gone it's out although there is a little zip tie thing here so we can cut that now we're gonna remove these screws here these four 516 screws and that's gonna separate the motor from this I don't even know what this is called but this thing all right so now we have the screws removed and this just pops off like that okay and then we have to remove this plate here, which I'm guessing is uh, to protect it from the heat exchanger considering it's right there. So we'll go ahead and, I'm not sure if the new motor has that on, but I'm gonna take it off because I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So if it does, then yeah. So anyway, let's get the new motor. All right, so we got the uh, heat exchanger shield or whatever that's called attached to it. Um, now you wanna notice something here. So basically we're gonna pick this up and put it on it and then put the screws in, but you see this little indent here? You see that little one right there? So that's how it lines up. And then your wires are gonna come through here. And it already actually, the new one comes with its own little grommet, which is nice. Okay, cool. Now I'll put our four screws. Yeah, in retrospect, I could have just taken the whole thing out. I just realized that. But yeah, so basically you take the whole thing out and you take it all apart. So yeah, so anyway, this is a lot easier. I still need to line up my holes better. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna get that lined up. Yeah, this is way easier doing it outside of the unit. Anyway, we got our screws all put in. Um, now we just need to put our shroud again. It's just the four clips and they fit in the holes like so. And clip, 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 clip all in there all right cool so now we'll just go ahead and slide this motor back in they slide right under there two screws and plug everything back in and then we're good to go motor is replaced granted i did it the more difficult and long way but i figured it out in the end give me some slacks first time i've changed one of these um but anyway it's in there so we're gonna go ahead and get set up we're gonna check the gas pressure just make sure there's no other issues um and then go from there we got it all back together. It just satisfied. Gas pressure is where it should be now. Fan's been running now for you know 20 something minutes. Uh, so I think we, I think we're good to go. So only time will tell at this point. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment to me what a horrible technician I am. Uh, hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for watching.